beautiful. Just beautiful. Doc, you're a genius. This thing is light years beyond any holographic imaging system in existence. The boys from corporate are going to canonize you. You want to grab some dinner later and celebrate? I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. Yeah. What else is new? What? Nothing. I just said all the astrogation programs checked out already. What the hell is that? It looks like a, a human fetus. Pretty far along, too. Eight, maybe nine months. I can see that. What the hell is it doing in my hologram display? I don't understand. It's not part of any program we're currently using. <laughs> this is crazy. All the error correcting codes are running. I ran all the debug routines this morning. Run them again. What do you think I'm doing? Okay, let's clear the memory. Power it down and reload the system. A cold reset? It'll take all day to bring it back up again. You have a better suggestion? Okay, I think we're ready to power it up. Here it goes. Well, that's that. Let's get some sleep. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've never seen a glitch like that. Well, someone may have accessed the system, changed the program. It's been known to happen. How? I don't know. Maybe a young hacker got a computer for Christmas. Yeah, it's almost seemed alive. Come on, Dan, don't get weird on me. Let's call it a night. Look, I really don't think this is the right time to talk about it, okay? Kevin, you knew when we got married I wanted to have kids. You said you wanted them too. I do. I just, I just don't feel ready. I mean, there's still so much work to do at the lab. Oh, to hell with the lab. You spend all your time there. I barely even see you anymore. And when I do, all you can talk about is your work. It's three years of my life. You can't expect me to just throw that away, can you? You got four years invested in our marriage. You can't very well throw that away either, can you? No, of course not. Come here. Kevin. Come on. Please. You've been under job pressure before. Things have never been this bad between us. Come on, what's wrong? I'm sorry. I can't handle this right now. I, I just need to be alone for a while. I'll, I'll sleep in the den for tonight, OK?
left me here all night and all alone. It's okay. <laughs> Somebody's here and now. Okay, uh, just hold, hold, hold on. I, I've got, I've got an idea. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. You, you stay right there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Graphics mode. Image. Uh, okay. Let's give you a triangle. I think this is just some glitch in the system. When I programmed that ball, it behaved. She behaved. Like any normal kid her age. No program in the world can mimic spontaneous reaction to her. Unexpected stimuli. Hi. Hi. You like the ball? Yeah, thanks, mister. Name's Kevin. What's your name? Nola. Nola? You have a last name, honey? Granville. Nola Granville. Pretty name. Where do you live, Nola? I used to live in West Chester. Do you mean West Chester in New York? Yeah, in a big green house from across the Spring Lake. Mm, the, the what? It's grassy Spring Lake. In Upper Yonkers, near Hastings on Hudson. What you're doing here? Why you're here? Isn't this what I'm supposed to be? Yeah, yeah, of course it is, Noah. You're you're home. It's amazing. She seems to be aging at the rate of 10 months every hour. That works out to about 10 years per day. <laughs> it's incredible. Did you turn up anything on that house she described? There is a Granville family living in that area. The house has been in the family since the turn of the century. They don't have a little girl named Nola, but the woman I talked to did recall a great aunt 
by that name. Kind of a black sheep. The family never talked about her much. Does anyone know where this great aunt is? She died quite a while back, apparently. No one knew the exact date. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Nova. Don't you want me to make you another ball or some different toys, something? That's OK. I don't need any. Don't you get kind of bored, Nola? When I get bored, I just go somewhere else. What do you mean when you say you go somewhere else? In my head. Like just now, I was out by the sprained lake, remembering the time Daddy took us out for a picnic. I walked into the water, up to my knees. And Daddy... Daddy paddled me. Hard. I didn't want to remember that part. So when you think about these people, or these places, these things, it's like you're almost there? Yeah. But I like being here. You better. Nola, do you remember when it was your daddy took you to the lake? What year? I think it was... 19... And 17, maybe 16. Yeah, 19 and 16. Look, I, I know this is going to sound pretty bizarre, but do you suppose that somehow, some way, that a, a human soul has reincarnated inside that computer? Dan, I'm not sure I believe in the human soul, much less in reincarnation. Why? Why is a soul less credible than any of a dozen hypothetical subatomic particles? We can't prove that they exist either. Yeah, but that's different. We can posit their existence from the behavior of other observable phenomena. Yeah. Well, that's your phenomena in there, Doc. To observe. I remember this one time. Daddy got hold of a book of poetry I was reading, William Butler Yeats. In one poem, Yeats uses the dread word copulate. <laughs> and Daddy, well, Daddy was neither amused nor enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> now, I tried reading him the one that begins, I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honeybee, and live alone in, in the, the bee loud, loud glade. <laughs> and I shall have some peace there. You know Yeats. I know some Yeats. So didn't your father like it? He didn't let me finish. Took the book away from me and um, tossed it into the fire. It's not a girl's place, he'd say, to think about such things. And when I'd ask him questions about literature and politics, he'd, he'd just smile, a, a patronizing little smile, and tell me how beautiful I was. You must be bored by now. I feel like I'm dictating my memoirs or something. What about you? What's your life like? Tell me everything. Well, there's nothing really much to tell. Now, come on, about your father. Are you married, Kevin? Yes, yes, I am. Oh. What's your name? Carol. Now, come on, about your father. Tell me. What's she like? Is she smart? She'd have to be, I bet, for you to marry her. Yeah, she's very smart. We met in the night class, uh, I don't know, five years ago. This woman walks in, she sits down, she starts talking to me. In five minutes, we're chatting away like old friends, and we're weak. I'm madly in love with her. Not long after that, we're married. <laughs> I never thought it would happen to me that quickly. Anyway, 
she's a very bright lady. That's nice. I'm happy for you, Kevin. <sighs> she must be a very lucky girl. Kev, what do you expect me to say? <sighs> you spend all night at the lab. You don't even call me till the next morning. And now... What could possibly be so wrong with your project that you have to go sleep at the lab? If I told you, you'd think I was crazy. Hey, look. You know, we've lived this long with each other's craziness. I think I can stand a little more. Oh, for God's sakes, Carol, it's only... I don't know how long it's for, but it's only temporary until I get this uh, sorted out. You mean the project? Or us? Are you leaving me, Kevin? I don't know! I don't know anything anymore! This is Aunt Nola. She was five years old. Amazing. Her father was a real snob. He and Nola had a falling out when she was in her 20s. That's the last the family had contact with her. A falling out over what? A man, law student, uh, tutoring at NYU. Oh, her father was apoplectic. He threatened to disinherit her, but Nola didn't care. She'd always felt guilty about her family's wealth. Very little of it survives today. Myself, I wouldn't mind being a bit more guilty. <laughs> oh, I think his name was Robert. Robert. Robert Goldstone. He was nothing like the polo playing dunderheads I grew up with. He saw the sorry state the world was in, and he wanted to do something about it. He listened to me, Kevin. Just like you do. <laughs> we talked about everything. He wanted to set up a law practice for the disadvantaged, while I got my master's in literature at uh, Boston College. What did your parents think about that? Father didn't approve of any of it. Especially Robert. Why, because the guy wasn't rich? That too. But mainly because he was Jewish. Oh, come on. You're kidding. No, he made it quite clear if... If I married Robert, I would be cut off. From him, mother, from everything. The whole family. I love that's terrible.
Robert and I loved that house in Cambridge. When I finally got pregnant, we decided to sell it and get a larger place. So I... Wait a minute. Pregnant? You, you, you've never mentioned that before. I just remembered it. You know, Kevin, in, a, in an odd sort of way, when I... When I sit here remembering, it's almost as though it's all happening for the first time. <laughs> anyway, the pregnancy came as quite a surprise. My obstetrician had said I had a slight malformation of the uterus. Warned me it, um, it might be difficult to conceive a child. But... Oh, come on, don't keep me in suspense. Is it a boy or a girl? I went into labor in the middle of writing a paper for the poetry review. I kept that thing clutched in my hand all the way to the hospital. They finally pried it loose just as I was being wheeled into the operating room. Ah! Oh, what is it? What's wrong? What is it? Ah! Oh, God, make it stop. Make it stop. I don't know. She, she just doubled over. She screamed in pain. I never felt so helpless in my life. Are you all right? What was it? What was the matter? I lost the baby, Kevin. Remember now. I... I have to be by myself for a while now, Kevin. Just for a little while. I'll be back. I, I, I promise. Back. I didn't know she could do that. Neither did I. God, you look awful. How much sleep are you getting? Enough. A couple hours a night. I... I can't afford to squander my time with her. Come on. Let's, let's get some air. I think we need to talk. Look, maybe I can spell you. No, not necessary. Thanks. Oh, besides... I got uh, some more people for you to track down. And she's a very special person. We gotta help her if we can. Okay? Look, Doc, we've never really had anything more than a professional relationship. So maybe this is out of line, but you're not getting yourself involved here, are you? Involved? With his spirit? <laughs> Some would say that's what we fall in love with when we fall in love. A spirit. A soul. She's aging 10 years every day. At this rate, she'll be gone in three or four days. What do you do then? someone the kind of love I never had growing up. What? I was just thinking. Carol's mother, my, my wife's mother, 
was an alcoholic. I remember Carol said to me once that one of the reasons she really wanted to have a baby was so that she could be the kind of mother that she never had. I didn't understand what she meant until now. You're a good player. I had a good teacher. Robert loved chess. However, check. Oh. You're no slouch at this yourself. She says after having won three games in a row. Check. Wouldn't you rather be remembering instead of playing these games? I mean, what about your later years with Robert? Isn't there any... No, not right now, Kevin. I... I'm so tired of talking about myself. You talked to your wife lately? To Carol? Jack. You really want to lose her, Kevin? Please don't tell me about losing things. All I know is the, the moment in this life that you start to feel happiness, that's the, that's the moment the rug's pulled out from under you, that you lose everything. And if you never have happiness, you don't know what it's like to lose it. Do you? Well, now, wait a minute. I was... No, I'm not... I'm looking at this a little foolishly. I know my way around. I appreciate your talking to me, Mr. Ruskin. I'm afraid most of Robert and Nola's friends are... Most of them are dead. Sorry. I didn't mean to sound tactless. <laughs> I've spent the last 15 years of my life in darkness, Mr. Gaddis. And I've managed to enjoy life in spite of it. If darkness is all that's ahead of me, well, I think I can make the best of it. You knew Robert and Nola how long? 30 years. Ever since Robert opened his law practice. They were lovely people. Robert with his passion for social justice. Nola with her love of poetry. She published quite a few papers. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. These must be beautiful. Yes, they are. Did either of them leave behind any unfinished business, some dream, some goal that they never fulfilled? Well, in later years, you know, Robert lost so much of his passion after Nola died. He was a different man. She was taken from him so early. I don't think he ever really recovered from that. Excuse me, but exactly when did Nola die? I believe in March. Yes, March of 1943. She was only 35. What a waste. What a terrible waste. How did she die? I thought you knew. She died in childbirth. Carol, it's Kevin. I'm at the lab. Carol, it's Kevin. I'm at the lab. Carol, 
It's Kevin. I'm at the lab. Cow, 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 it's Kevin. I'm at the lab. Swing by and give me a lift. Yeah, I think I can manage that. I'll see you in a while. Okay. I love you. Kevin. Kevin, it's, it's time to wake up. I have to leave now. Oh. Afraid so. I accomplished what I had to and, and now it's time to leave. What did you accomplish? Why are you here? I was here for you, Kevin. Me? I'm not sure that I understand what you're saying. But if what you say is true, No choice. No! No! I can't lose you again! Like you lost me before. That's right! Yes! Like before! No! I left you too soon, my darling. I didn't mean to, but I did. It's not possible. You carried the grief with you all your life and into the next. But I don't remember any of it. You remembered enough to be afraid. Afraid of love. Afraid of losing it. I had to live out a life with you to make up for the one we never had a chance to share. So the fear would go away. So you were. Uh... You knew all along? Mm. Only uh, after the miscarriage. I wasn't just remembering my pain, Kevin. I was remembering my death. After that, it all became clear. <laughs> I don't think. Perhaps it's just as well. You have a life to live out. Don't let it pass you by. Not again. I have to leave now. No. Wait. Please. Just one minute.
Yates again. <laughs> Do you remember one called When You Are Old? When you are old and gray, full of sleep. This is one line. How many loved your moments of glad grace? And loved your beauty with love, false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you. And loved the sorrows of your changing face. Shall we let her through? Yes. Yeah, let her through. Yes, sir. You called for a taxi? I guess I did. Beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid her face amid a crowd of stars. A variation on William Butler Yeats to all those who have loved and lost and loved again on earth or in the twilight zone. 